everyone and uh, my this video is a part of the series of uh, videos we are making uh, related to the DRDO interviews, ISRO interviews and BARC interviews. As you know BARC, DRDO, ISRO they are the premium research institutes in India and uh, the interviews of these organizations are very important. In fact almost 100% selection is ensured only on the basis of the interview. The moment you get interview call, then it all depends upon interview. As far as the DRDO is concerned, the preliminary, uh, you know, uh, this uh, shortlisting of the students was done on the basis of the gate or written exam. And thereafter, you need to score minimum 70% in the interview. That means interview is actually very crucial. Another factor is like uh, for these organizations, HR part is very less. Largely, it is a technical part they drag you in and they interview ask you the questions in the interview from the technical part another important feature is unlike the interviews of public sectors campus placements assistant engineers assistant professors the interviews of these organizations do not check the knowledge for answers they check the approach how do you reach the answer that is very important so they keep on increasing the degree of difficulty of the question they will give you a very simple question in the beginning and then they will check the thought the clarity of your uh, thoughts and the approach you you know approach you follow to reach the solution so that is very very important and i am going to give you in fact my entire team of mentors is going to display this particular thing explain this particular thing through the questions now let me take here uh, today the question from thermodynamics now what is second law of thermodynamics that is the first question they will ask you. You know there are four laws of thermodynamics. The first uh, law they will ask you uh, one of the laws of this and they will ask you what is the second law of thermodynamics. Now the moment you say uh, there are different ways how you can define the second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics is the qualitative law sir. Like first law is a quantitative law quantity it tells about the quantity of energy. Second law tells you about the quality of energy. Second law tells you about whether some particular process is feasible or possible or not and it defines thermodynamic property called entropy. Second law can be expressed in terms of two statements Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement. So there are two statements for second law one is Kelvin Planck and another is Clausius statement. Normally students start with these statements the moment they are asked what is the second law they say sir second law can be explained in terms of two statements you should not start with this you should start with what actually is this it's a qualitative law tells you what the direction of the flow of energy whether some process is feasible or not and then defines the thermodynamic property which is called entropy these are basic things you need to tell first Kelvin Planck law deals with the device called heat engine. You know this is the device in which heat is given, heat is rejected and work is performed. So it defines about heat engine. Clausius statement tells you about heat pump. You know this is the device in which heat flows from low temperature body to high temperature body on the consumption of external work. Here you define a term called efficiency and here you define a term depending upon it is for you know the heat pump or refrigerator it can be defined as q1 by w or it can be defined by q2 by w the range of cop is more than one here and this is never one it is always less than one Kelvin Planck and Clausius statement these two statements and then you can define it the statements you can always say that there cannot be any device which produces the network by exchanging heat only with a single thermal reservoir. That is the statement of Kelvin Planck. Maximum students make a mistake that Kelvin Planck says an efficiency cannot be one. That is not Kelvin Planck statement. Efficiency cannot be one or 100% is not the statement of Kelvin Planck. It is the interpretation of that. So Kelvin Planck statement, what is Kelvin Planck statement? It says that there cannot be any device which is producing work by exchanging heat only 
with single thermal reservoir q1 it, there cannot be such kind of engine and if it is there that is called perpetual motion machine of second type we will discuss about that and similarly there cannot be device which converts heat from you know low body temperature to high body temperature without consumption of any external work that is a Cauchy statement so you define these two statements and if you define it clearly then the next question comes that just now you defined about heat engine now this is the typical schematic diagram of heat engine you take you know heat energy from high temperature body which is called source and you reject the heat to low temperature body which is called sink and in the process you do the work now the question is heat engine is based upon first law or second law let me tell you what is first law first law says that q1 is equal to q2 plus w total energy is conserved so total energy given to the system total energy rejected by the system that is the first law second law if you see from here will be telling you about the direction of flow and all now because heat engine is based upon second law but first law the efficiency the engine basically no doubt heat engine is Kelvin Planck statement but when you want to calculate the efficiency of the you know heat engine then first law is also utilized first law says you about this and the second law says that entire q1 cannot be converted into w some heat needs to be rejected if i say q1 is equal to w just now i will discuss with perpetual motion machine of second type if i say if i write this kind of you know diagram if i write this is perpetual motion machine of second type there is nothing wrong in this as far as the first law is concerned from first law perspective it is correct right so first law says energy is conserved q1 is equal to w but the second law says no some heat needs to be rejected q2 and hence we need another reservoir also so the heat engine as a device actually is uh, you know Kelvin Planck talks about that device but actually it is based upon first law and second law where first law comes sir let us say first law is uh, you know let us say only uh, uh, first law is basically only talking about this then the first law says this is also possible perpetual motion machine of second type is also possible this is also looking like engine engine with 100% efficiency and the, if you say second law second law says no it is not possible so first law basically quantity gives you the quantity so how much is the w produced now so w produced is q1 minus q2 that is the first law when you say w is equal to q1 minus q2 it is the first law and the rest is you know that q2 has to be there that is the second law so yes both the laws are used here to calculate the efficiency what is pmmm2 that i already I discussed with you such kind of device which by interacting only with single thermal reservoir can convert entire heat into work q2 is zero and if that is the situation what is the efficiency w by q1 but first law says that q1 is equal to w and from there efficiency is one so what is the efficiency of perpetual motion machine of second type answer is the efficiency is 100 percent or one but actually it cannot happen such machine does not exist why because it violates kelvin planck statement so pmm2 violates kp statement kelvin planck statement it violates kelvin planck statement so do you know any kind of device which approximate pvmm2 perpetual motion machine of you know uh, second type do you know any kind of device which approaches this where you are giving heat and entire heat is converted into w think over it perpetual motion machine of first type perpetual motion machine of second type why do we study this what is the significance why do we study this because you know you always need to know that where can i attain can I attain limitation where I get very high efficiency without you know loss without any kind of loss to the surroundings KP says that you know Q2 has to be there but KP does not say that how much Q2 should be there Q2 can be very very less it can be very very less approach is almost zero right in that case you approach PMM2 so how do you how any engine approaches PMM2 engine approaches PMM2 when Q2 becomes 
very very less and that is the significance of why you study PMM2 that you know mathematics may limit is there approaching something that gives you reference. Can you write equation of second law? Yes. Clausius inequality say dq by t is less than equal to this cyclic integral dq by t Clausius inequality right. So, if I say q dq by t for a process less than equal to ds because I can write this 0 as ds cyclic integral because it is a thermodynamic property cyclic integral of any property is 0. So, Clausius this uh, you know he thought it like uh, ds entropy that is how entropy as a term was born. Now, to equate both these things I need to add something this side and that something which I added is equal to this. So, I get the equation of second law which helps me to calculate the entropy plus ds generation. This is the second law. This is the entropy change which is a thermodynamic property. Entropy change. dq is heat interaction at particular temperature T and ds generation is entropy generated. Entropy change and entropy generated these are two different things. This is entropy generated. Normally when he asks you can you write the second law, normally students think of this. This is Clausius inequality for cycle, for process and then we reach the uh, equality. Equality means equation. Clausius inequality to equation becomes second law, equation of second law. And then that gives us you know some idea how to find it out. Now what is irreversibility? Irreversibility is actually the maximum possible work minus actual work. The rest is lost in the process. That is the definition of irreversibility. But Goyester-Dola equation says I can calculate it as ds generation. And you know what is ds generation? This is delta s of universe. And you know what is delta s of universe? Delta s of system plus delta s of surrounding. So, t not into delta s generation is irreversibility. So, what is the relation between now second law and entropy generation? Yes, second law tells us this is nothing but dq by t plus ds generation. And if I want to find out ds generation, how do I find it out? ds minus dq by t. And if I want to find out irreversibility, don't you think this is t naught ds generation, which is t naught ds minus t naught dq by t. Can you think of something like this? So, irreversibility and second law. He will see how you approach this entire thing. Now, he will be asking you a question in the way you start answering that is very, very important. And the process how you explain, how you keep on explaining in between. So, can you tell me the difference of isentropic process? What is isentropic process? If ds is 0, it is called isentropic process. This is isentropic. If dq is 0, it is called adiabatic process. First, we should know these things. If ds generation is 0, then it is a reversible process. Because if entropy generated is 0, then that is a reversible process. Only in the reversible process it will be 0. Because for other processes there will be irreversibility. Entropy generated cannot be 0. Now, what is the second law? ds is equal to dq by t plus ds generation. If isentropic, this is 0 for isentropic right and dq is 0, ds generation is 0 is called reversible adiabatic, reversible adiabatic. So, are both equal same? Every reversible adiabatic process dq 0, ds generation, every reversible adiabatic process is isentropic also, but every isentropic process may not be reversible adiabatic. Okay? Give example, plus 1, minus 1, just add plus 1, minus 1. Is this 0? No, this is not 0, this is minus 1. Is this 0? No, this is plus 1. So, irreversible, non-adiabatic can also be isentropic. Irreversible, non-adiabatic can also be isentropic. So, every reversible adiabatic is isentropic, but vice versa is not true. What is polytropic process? PV raised to power n is equal to constant any general reversible process, any general reversible process is called polytropic process. 
depending upon if n is equal to 0, p is equal to constant, it becomes isobaric. n is equal to 1, p v is equal to constant, ideal gas equation may you go t is equal to constant, it becomes isothermal process. If n is equal to gamma, it becomes P V rest of gamma is equal to constant, it becomes reversible adiabatic process. And if n approaches infinity, it becomes V is equal to constant, isochoric process. How that is possible? This becomes infinity. For that, we need to go to P V diagram. P V diagram may how will you plot V is equal to constant process? And can you tell me what is the slope of PV raised to n is equal to constant process. dp by dv kya hoga? If I am not wrong, the slope of dp by dv, PV diagram, dp by dv minus np over v. Now, this slope is infinite. dp by dv, slope of PV diagram for this line is infinite. And if this has to be infinite, neither p is infinite nor v is infinite. For this to be infinite, n needs to approach infinity. From there, we can devise isochoric process. Now, these questions may look like simple, but the way you explain it within that particular time, the clarity of thought, how do you approach the problem? Like isochoric process drive crop polytropic process say, usko drive karne ke liye chota sa concept batana padega, then how you have to go for it. Isentropic or reversible adiabatic mein difference batao, uske liye aapko thoda sa karna padega. So, these things are basically to be done. So, interview of these organization has particular approach. Start practicing with the mentors of your pedia and you will be very very prepared for these interviews. You are very close and if you are close get into these organization they are very good jobs. DRDO you know dream job for so many of you ISRO, BARC prepare well and without practice without preparation you cannot convert it. So, let us start preparing together and we convert it. Thank you.